hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are here for the first time you are so 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 welcome my name is Lina and in today's video I am going to be reacting to geography now Portugal okay so this video was actually suggested to me by this person down here thank you for the suggestion and I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into the video if you still haven't subscribed to my channel let me know I mean not let me know <laughs> I meant if you haven't subscribed to my channel just go ahead and subscribe to my channel and let's just go ahead and do this video okay okay hey everyone I'm your host Barbs this episode couldn't have come at a better time because I literally just got back from a trip to Portugal with my mom I met tons of you guys the Portuguese geography peeps and little side note hey everybody this is João he is a native Portuguese person he'll be coming in and out of this episode explaining things about Portugal so okay say hi hi anyway let's look at the globe now shall we Portugal is sometimes called the door to Europe. It's the start to the mainland. The Portuguese are ocean people. They need to be close to the sea. They get uncomfortable without it. With that in mind, their country is pretty ideal for them location-wise. Portugal, the rectangle-shaped country, is located at the very end of the Iberian Peninsula, surrounded by Spain on all three sides, as well as two island regions in the Atlantic. They have the westernmost point of continental Europe, Cabo de Roca, and the westernmost okay. point of Europe's domain, the island of Santa Cruz das Flores. Important note, Portugal has one of the oldest borders in Europe and one of the oldest in the world very much thanks to this treaty signed between these two kings back in 1297. Oh, Spanish and Portuguese okay. have always usually had amicable relations in regards to their states. The only kind of dispute they have is over the town of Olivenza. This is not an official dispute but most Portuguese believe that it kind of probably should be theirs because of history or something look it up. For what it's worth okay. though there's even a spot where you can zip line across this river from Portugal into Spain. Oh wow. For one hour in time because for some reason Portugal decided to follow the UTC plus one zone instead of plus two like Spain, meaning that even though Galicia is on the same longitude, they are one hour ahead. Anyway, the country is divided into 18 okay. districts and two autonomous regions, the Azores and Madeira Islands. These two island regions give a huge boost to Portugal's exclusive economic zone by over 1.7 million square kilometers, making it the third largest EEZ in the EU and the 20th in the world. The capital is Lisbon, and of course it holds the largest airport, Lisbon International, as well as the largest shipping port, the Port of Lisbon. The second largest city is actually Sintra, followed by Vila Nova de Gaia. However, Porto actually holds the second busiest airport, and Faro in the south rounds out for third place for airports as well. Remember, okay. even though these little uninhabited guys known as the Savage Islands are closer to the Canary Islands of Spain, they actually belong to Portugal and make up the southernmost part of Portugal's domain. One of which, right here, Pontina, is actually a self proclaimed micronation purchased by some art teacher dude who bought it and then later claimed independence from Portugal in 2007. Keep in mind, these overseas regions, in addition to the Canary Islands and Cape Verde, are part of a larger oceanic region known as Macaronesia, not to be confused with Micronesia, which is halfway across the world. Yeah, the okay. Micronesian island thing. That's a weird one. Look it up. They kind of have all they need in that small space as long as they have the largest portion of the Atlantic coast on the Iberian Peninsula. This is kind of what allowed them to become the front runners in the age of discovery and European exploration. Understood. Most of the first and famous explorers you've probably already heard of, Magellan yeah, and Vasco da Gama, they come from Portugal. Ahem. Yeah, 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 you guys took the Arctic and Finland like hundreds of years earlier. For what it's worth, though, it's important to note that historically, not only were the Portuguese the first to kick off the age of exploration with the first discovery at the Azores and Madeira Islands, but they also had a vast empire at one point expanding across five continents as far as East Timor, to mm -hmm. and everything in between. The problem was, with the exception of Brazil, Angola, and Mozambique, the Portuguese really only kind of maintained numerous ports and coastal colonies that didn't encroach far inland with the connecting land masses. Their love of the ocean kind of ended up diminishing much of their land claims and the majority of the ports were either fought over and lost or sold to other colonial powers of the 18th and 19th centuries. Okay. Nonetheless, outside of the sovereign Portuguese-speaking countries today, you will see small remnants of Portuguese influence in places like China's special autonomous region of Macau with its Portuguese-named streets and the churches and culture of areas like Goa as well as Damam and Diu in okay. India. Anyway, this segment is getting kind of long. Here are some places of interest that you guys, the Portuguese people, suggested we mention in this episode. They have 17 unique UNESCO heritage sites. Many of them are famous monasteries or churches or sanctuaries. Sintra has that cool national palace thing and this grotto palace. Guimarães okay. has that castle where Portugal kind of started. Ericeira is like the best surfing spot. Pretty much the entire city of Porto with its colorful neoclassical and Oh, that charm. is nice. They also have the coolest bookstore ever and the most beautiful McDonald's. Those Boulder homes in Monsanto. What, the castle of okay. Bolgidos. Évora has like the best historic sites and even a Portuguese Stonehenge. Hmm. Valley rock art site. 
Heights, the world's shortest international bridge with Spain, the cemetery of anchors, the Monte Penedono Dolmen, pretty much everything on Madeira Island with its beaches and botanical gardens, the museums. Oh, that is so nice. Lisbon has so many sites like the Belem Tower, the Geronimo's Monastery, and every year there is a huge pilgrimage to the town of Fatima, one of the oldest really? sites in Portugal. Yeah, and that's the thing about okay. Portugal. Like, once someone finds a cool hidden natural spot, it usually gets exposed and invaded fast. And speaking of nature, that brings us to... Oh, that is nice. Now, as mentioned, Portugal is an ocean-loving country that loves the sea and water. Nonetheless, the actual people do need to kind of live on land and, like, grow food on it and stuff. So, of yeah, there's, this is how you break it down. Portugal's land makeup, of course, is made up of the two main parts that fall under Portuguese sovereignty, the continental Portuguese landmass on the Iberian Peninsula and the two island regions of the Azores and the Madeira Islands. The continental mm -hmm. part of Portugal is located on the Eurasian Plate, close to the convergence of the African Plate. Geologists speculate that there could be a newly emerging rift which could explain some of the seismic activity, such as the Great Lisbon Earthquake of 1755 that nearly destroyed the entire city on All Saints Day. Look it up. Wow. Anyway, the northern parts are generally more mountainous and hilly, with two main mountain chains, the northern Meseta Mountains and the Serra da Estrela, which has Torre, the tallest point on the mainland. However, if we're talking about the tallest point in the entire country, that actually belongs to Mount Pico on Azores Island. Back to the mainland, though. The country is shaped by three main rivers, the Douro in the north, the longest river of the country, the Tagus, or Taj, and the Guadiana in the south, which feeds into the largest lake of the country, Lake Alqueva, which is actually a reservoir created by the Alqueva Dam. The south of the country, known as the Southern Meseta, is generally flatter and lush with the Sado Basin fed by the Sado River. Skipping over to the island regions, the Azores and Madeira Islands are volcanic archipelagos, generally lush and green, and mild to warm year-round. Madeira actually has a UNESCO nature zone, the Lorisilva, or Laurel Forests of the north side. For the Azores, they are kind of precariously positioned right at the triple junction of three tectonic plates, and the westernmost mm -hmm. islands, Corvo and Flores, are actually located in the North American plate. They are beautiful green islands that actually kind of resemble the Irish countryside with farm plots dotted everywhere. This island chain is also the only part of Europe, if you don't consider the Caucasus part of Europe, where tea can be cultivated naturally in its okay. environment. Phew, that was pretty compact in detail. Yeah. And you get to talk about all the cool stuff like the cave beach of Benadil, oh. this tidal pool, or that place where the largest wave ever was surfed by that dude. Oh, that was Whoa. Portugal. Yes, it was. Look it up. In the meantime, you know the deal. I take my triple shot of espresso break, which means Noah comes in to fill in for the rest of this segment. Did somebody say Keith? No. I believe he said Noah. For one, they are masters of making anything out of trees, as over a third of the country is forested mostly with oaks, pines, and eucalyptus. Such Portuguese companies, like the Navigator Company, are world-renowned for paper products. And Amorium is the world's largest cork producer, and Portugal being number one in cork production in general. You will see tons of stuff from Portugal made of cork. Cork purses, cork shoes, cork notebooks, oh. cork everything. And they love okay. their wine with Port, Rosé, Green, and Madeira wines being some of the most popular types. I didn't know Portugal that. Portugal is home to many animal species as well. In the continental side, you will find mammals like wild pigs, wild goats, hares, foxes. The unofficial national animal, though, or at least a common national symbol, would technically be the legendary mythical Barcelos rooster. They're Europe's top seafood consumer per capita and usually in the top four worldwide. And of course, okay. brings us to the final segment, food! Some top local dishes food. you guys, Portuguese geography suggests, we mentioned include things like the most iconic national soup, caldo verde. These two sandwiches are probably the most popular ones, pastéis de nata. And finally, with seafood, they have everything from cuttlefish, crabs, shrimp, spiny oh. lobster, barnacles, mackerel, lamprey, sea bass, clams, oysters, periwinkles, scallops, sardines. Dude, the Portuguese make the best octopus I ever had in my life. Fun fact, the Portuguese Portuguese actually introduced samosas to India, tempura to Japan, and England would probably wouldn't have tea if the Portuguese hadn't traded with China. And of course, the most okay. popular dish of Portugal often seen as a national dish, bacalao, which is salted cod, deliberately preserved and soaked before cooking. Interestingly enough, cod isn't even commonly caught off their coast, so they have to resort to importing it, usually from the North Sea. Their national dish okay. isn't even really found naturally in their own country. But what does occur naturally in Portugal are the Portuguese people. Let's meet them, shall we? Yeah. Thank you, Noah. Keith again. Ark, take care of this one. Oh my god. Oh! You're welcome. Now, I asked Joao to describe the Portuguese, and here are some things he said. Uh, it's like a resourcefulness of waste. So if you give us like a corkscrew and a frisbee, they'll give you a scooter. Another one is estar com os azeites. Wait, wait, wait. Estar com os azeites. Estar com os azeites. Oh, did I say that right? Or in a real bad mood. 
To sum it up, that's the ideal Portuguese way. In any case, the country has about 10.5 million people, and they're okay. one of the top aging populations in the world and has the highest emigration rate in the EU. The exact hmm. numbers are not always completely reliable, but many sources on average report that somewhere around 90 to 95 percent of the population identifies as Portuguese. But that term is very broad, as there are many different types of Portuguese people that look totally different from the others. Some of them Definitely. are blonde hair and blue eyed, and some are tan and olive and brunette. Either way, Portuguese. The remainder of the 5 to 10% of the population comes from all over the world, mostly Europe and former colonial states like Brazil, Angola, and Mozambique, and even a small Asian minority as well, mostly Macau Chinese, and India from Goa and Damam and okay. They use the euro as their currency, they use the type C and F plug outlets, and they okay. drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, in Portugal, the official language is Portuguese, a Latin-based Romance language. It's actually related to the Galician language in North Spain, and usually hmm. the two can pretty much understand each other, and weirdly enough, Galicians and North Portuguese these people have Celtic roots. Really? We'll talk more about that in the Spain episode. But anyway, Portugal also technically has a second regionally official language, Mirandese, which is only spoken by about 15,000 people in two municipalities of the Northeast region. Oh, but otherwise, okay. okay, just being straight up, Portuguese is the most difficult Latin language for me personally. But after spending some time in Portugal, I figured out a shortcut if you want to learn how to speak Portuguese. Here's how you do it. Step one, be Russian. Step two, <laughs> get drunk. Step three, try to speak Spanish. Meu nome é Paulo, eu gosto de... <laughs> Calm down. This is oh, true. really? No, it's not endorse underage drinking or alcoholism. And also, do not confuse the Portuguese with the Spanish. They hate that. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I meant. Okay. So, <laughs> this is very funny because when he said, do not confuse, um the Portuguese people with the Spanish people because they hate it. I was like, okay, that explains it. Because I did a video where I tried to speak Spanish, okay? The entire video, I tried to speak Spanish. And on the thumbnail of this video, there's this Portuguese flag. So there, there, there are just so many flags and there was a Portuguese flag on the thumbnail as well. And this guy just commented and said, why did you put Portuguese flag on the thumbnail? And I'm like, no reason. And he's like, no, um, the Portuguese hates to be associated with the Spanish and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm, okay, I did not know that. So I guess that explains it. Like, mm. But I mean, I didn't think it was anything bad. But now that he's saying it, I guess, yes. Hey, Joao, I have that? this conversation with him. Hey, Joao? Yes? When I go to Portugal, would it be okay if I spoke some Spanish just in case if I had a complete communication problem? Yeah, no, don't. Just don't. Trust me, you're better off just using English. So anyway, the Portuguese, as mentioned, have a lot okay. of Russian history and Catholic roots. About 81% of the country identifying to varying degrees of devotion as Roman Catholic. Wait, okay, but another question. So he said do not even speak Spanish. Oh, now I'm scared because I'm about to go to Portugal. So what, um, if I speak Italian, is it okay? Or do I just speak English? Like, would it be okay to not speak Spanish, but try to speak, I mean, but, but speak Italian? Is it understandable? Or should I just speak English like he advised? Let me know. Like, the Portuguese aren't too quick to note that they did kind of start the Atlantic slave trade, although keep in mind that East they African did. slave trade was actually started centuries prior by Arabs in the Indian Ocean. Moving on! Portuguese culture comes in many fascinating, vibrant forms of tradition and custom, and with that, here's Random Hannah to explain. Random Hannah. Portugal today is a very distinct nation, but if you dig close, you can see the layers of influence from groups like Phoenician, the Celtic, Germanic, Visigoth, Viking, Sephardic, Jewish, and Moorish people. Yeah, even Vikings. And don't you forget it. Of course, as intrepid maritime folk, the Portuguese were the first to invent galleon ships that launched off the Age of Discovery for Europe, post-Viking era. With that, they also created the first forms of Western-style nautical cartography and navigation. It would later be taught and used across the continent. One guy even tried to pioneer one of the first airship designs. Although oh. Portugal may not be well known for their painters or graphic arts, I mean, this dude went crazy and burned every single yeah, one of his paintings. One. They definitely have a tradition of three-dimensional expression that dates back centuries. Distinct Portugal styles include things like Manuelin architecture of the 16th century, and even today, people like Bordalo II continue the tradition of three-dimensional art. Fun fact, okay. you can probably guess a home is Portuguese if the exterior walls have tiles on them, and often blue pattern tiles. They have their own unique okay. Portuguese sport, where you have to knock off a pen with metal discs and varying weights and sizes. Nonetheless, 
no shocker. Soccer or football is the most popular sport with their oldest club dating back to 1893 in Portland. Their national team has consistently ranked high in FIFA standings. We all know Ronaldo is the most mainstream, noteworthy face of Portuguese football today. I mean, the guy has multiple statues of himself. The I love him. Eusebio is considered one of the greatest football yeah, icons of all time and the symbol of the nation's sport. Festivals, of course, adorn the entire nation from north to south, many rooted in Catholic tradition. June is a huge month where the Festival of the Three Saints take place all over the country, honoring St. Anthony, John, and Peter, where there is a lot of wine and sardines with fireworks. There's also many okay. of these original festivals, like the Festa de Coco, in which they do fun dragon slaying performances. There's the Lazarine Carnival, one of the only places where Celtic rituals can be seen. And wow. the festivities are usually filled with music, which I guess means we're moving on to Keith's segment. <laughs> Uh, all right. Starting as early as Gregorian chants in the medieval ages, evolving into the classical era, and eventually winning Eurovision, Portugal has had lots of musical accolades. Oh, and there's hi. a certain word that kind of describes the overall feeling of Portuguese-ness when it comes to music. Saudade. Saudade. Translates to something like a sense of melancholy and longing as if something were missing. Uh, this type of mindset is one of the key elements that inspired the most famous of all Portuguese musical genres, Fado. It's even listed as a UNESCO heritage trait. The most okay, recognizable name of Fado being Amalia Rodriguez. Listen to it and see what you think. Portuguese have their own version of guitars, drums, accordions, even bagpipes. The ukulele from Hawaii was actually introduced from the Portuguese migrants, mostly from the Azores and Madeira Islands, where my ancestors are actually from. Fun fact. Today, the Portuguese music scene has everything from mainstream hip-hop, rock, pop, metal, Moonspell being one of the more popular metal bands from Portugal. Uh, one time I saw Moonspell at... I think it was Ozfest. I don't remember. Moon spell is awesome. Yeah, thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, we got to move on to the incredibly condensed history section. Proto-Iberian cultures, Indo-European migrations, Atlantic Bronze Age, Lisbon founded, Phoenicians, Proto-Celts, Rome comes in, Christianity, persecution of Christians, Visigoths, Vandals, Moors, Muslim years, Vikings come in briefly from the north parts, fighting, fighting, blah, 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 they get their first king after independence from Lyon, uninhabited Madeira and Azores Islands discovered, Age of Discovery kicks off, Atlantic slave trade, colonies established, Inquisitions, Greater Earthquake of 1755, Napoleon years. First Constitution, last monarch deposed, Republic, World War I, joins Allied forces, World War II, gets messy, Salazar begins his reign, colony wars in Africa, colonies gain independence, but Timor is still on hold, new Constitution, joins EU, World's Fair Expo, releases Macau, releases East Timor, okay. shows in trendy yet pretentious warehouse district cafes open up, and here we are today, oh, we asked you guys God. for a list of some of the top notable people from Portugal or of Portuguese descent, and they include people like Prince Henry the Navigator, even though he never really did any exploring himself, Bartolomeu Diaz, Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan, these athletes, these two popes, Nobel Prize winner in medicine, Egas Moniz, the greatest writers, Luis de Camões, Fernando Pessoa, and Jose Saramago, Daniela Rua, Carmen Moran, Anda, Maria Joao Pires, Sara Sampeo, Paula Rego, and some American and Canadian celebrities that have Portuguese descent include Nelly Furtado, John Mendes, one of my favorite oh, animators, okay. JG Quintel, even Tom Hanks, and uh, hmm. this guy, I guess. Uh, you got Portuguese, right? Yeah, totally, man. Great grandfather was actually born. He was born in the Madeira Islands. Keith Everett. Well, as you can see by now, with their bold exploring roots, Portugal has definitely left its mark on the world. And with that, we move on to see how the mark has impacted their relationships to others around the world. Okay. And Portugal is kind of like the smallest nation that left the biggest legacy. Over 30 times more people than the population of Portugal across the world speak Portuguese than in Portugal. For one, they have the longest official alliance between two countries on earth with the UK. Forged in 1373, they have been working alongside the British for a long time and have developed numerous bilateral policies and trade deals. Long story short, the Portuguese introduced tea to the British and the British helped them get cod. For France, Portugal is kind of like the lean Latin boy next door who keeps trying to flirt with France even though she's kind of dating Germany 
There are more Portuguese people <coughs> living abroad in France than any other nation at about 2 million. The Portuguese love the French. They enjoy the laissez-faire culture and charm and have integrated very well into French society. You the mean Portuguese are the first Europeans to have encountered the Japanese and much of the historical interaction reverberates to this day culturally. I mean, they founded the port city of Nagasaki and even the word arigato is derived from the Portuguese word obrigado. obrigado. Even when Japan ah. was isolated, they traded for centuries only with the Portuguese. Even though things got messy in the 60s and 70s, they still have close ties to their former colonies, especially Brazil, Angola, and to some extent Mozambique. Many of these people have recently moved in on separate migration waves, and today you can see many of them in major cities like Lisbon and Porto. Billions of dollars are yeah. traded with Angola annually, and Portugal even cancelled Mozambique's remaining debts from independence to 2005 at nearly $400 million. Wait, Brazil but is their biggest debt for what? It's like the sun they fed steroids and became a massive giant bodybuilder. Today, the Brazilian dialect of Portuguese is more widely taught and distributed in media than actual Portuguese Portuguese, and even after independence, uh, the two have shared a privileged family bond that will always have high favor towards the other. For what it's worth, though, when it comes to their best friend, most Portuguese might begrudgingly hate to admit it, but they kind of, at the end of the day, will always walk side by side with their oldest friend, Spain. Spain. Portugal was actually the first nation that fully emerged out of the Iberian Peninsula back when Spain was a bunch of disjointed kingdoms. Since then, they've been rivals and adversaries. During colonial years, they competed to see who could take over the Americas better. They've had centuries of conflict and treaties, alliances, unions, arguments. But in the end, they just have that Iberian culture and Latin root that ties them in so closely. Yeah. In conclusion, we I'm guessing, I'm guessing this is kind of like um, the Ghanaian Nigerian relationship. Ghanaians do not want to be referred to as Nigerians, and Nigerians don't want to be called Ghanaians. There's just this rivalry, by the end of the day, it's just love. And I think that is just, listen, I'm just saying from what I am hearing and from what I am seeing, I'm just thinking that there isn't that deep, deep, deep rivalry. At the end of the day, these guys are just, it's just all love. It's just all love. To keep things moderate and simple, but our history is anything but moderate and simple. Our love of water kind of spilled over into a global empire phenomenon that even us probably didn't see coming. Today, the Portuguese legacy lives on. Stay tuned! <laughs> like I said today, the Portuguese legacy still lives on. Okay, we hear you. That was really interesting, guys. That was interesting. I think I was paying a lot of attention because, like I said, I'm about to go to Lisbon. And so I really wanted to have, you know, a fair idea of what the country is like. And yeah, that was interesting. I love the video. And um, I knew some things. I did not know some things. Um, you know, when it comes to the geography and everything of Portugal, I probably did not know much about that. But when it comes to like history of Portugal, I think I do know some things with regards to, you know, the connection of Portugal and Africa. Do you know, I do know some things because the first person to even starts with this whole thing was portuguese who came to ghana do i know his name i can't think i can't think now in any case yes he was portuguese and the person to first bring coco to ghana was also portuguese so we do have that history like there is always that history there will always be that history and yeah i think that was basically it when it comes to food i saw that there was a lot of fish which was really really interesting well it's not really interesting. The country is just surrounded by the ocean and there's just fish. It makes sense. Why was I thinking way ahead? In any case, that was a video. I enjoyed the video. I won't lie. I enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, if you guys want me to do other videos, let me know. Let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed my reaction, just let me know. I just love to learn about people and places. So yeah, this was just normal for me and yeah i guess i'll see you guys in my next video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel okay i will see you when i see you bye